G'day everyone, welcome back. I'm Ben Goodbrand. Something amazing is about to happen in Australia. Gyms are opening up again. Okay, maybe we need to pull the excitement back a little bit. You won't be able to get out to your local gym straight away. It's gonna happen in a staged fashion. Let me tell you a bit about what's going to happen. In step one of the plan, outdoor gyms will be able to reopen with up to 10 people attending. Now, I'm not really sure what an outdoor gym is. I haven't uh, experienced an outdoor gym. All of the gyms I've ever been to have been indoor gyms, so I'm not sure who that's going to benefit, but as well as outdoor gyms, boot camps uh, will also be able to open with 10 people in attendance, but no indoor physical activity, including gyms, are in step one. In step two, indoor gyms with up to 20 people can reopen. But what does that actually mean? So if you think that uh, your local gym that you're a member of, a plus fitness, anytime fitness, fitness first, any gym with the word fitness in it, it seems to be a popular naming convention. If you think you're gonna be able to get out to your gym as you were pre-isolation or pre-lockdown, uh, that's simply not going to happen. So as I mentioned, there are some restrictions on the amount of people who'll be, that'll be able to use gyms at any one time. And that's going to mean some, some sim significant changes for a lot of these businesses. Uh, if you think about big 24 hour gyms, they really rely on having a, uh, a large membership base. Um, they have a, a low entry price, um, which means that a lot of people don't actually turn up to their those gyms. They make a lot of money from people signing up but not uh, attending. But the people looking to get back into the gym, I would imagine would have to book a slot. They will they'll have some sort of booking system for these big gyms so that they can ensure that they're um, complying with the, the new rules around the number of people that are in the gym at any one time. Now, um, some uh, gyms, which they're not really gyms, they're more fitness studios, group fitness studios already have this system in place. If you think about um, places like F45, um, your CrossFits, um, nine round, uh, 12 round boxing classes, um, things like that, Orange Theory, they've already got a booking system in place and that's fine for them. The big issue that they're going to have is that uh, the, 10, or the 10 or the 20 people um, coming at any one time. If you look at a, an F45, for example, it's not uncommon to see a class packed full of 30 to 40 people. Um, that's just not gonna be able to happen. And I don't think that's going to be a short-term um, scenario either. I think that F45, CrossFit, some of those smaller, um, high, high cost uh, group fitness classes are really gonna have to assess the way they, they do business. And in fact, I believe that they're probably going to have to put their prices up. And it's not like they're cheap already. If, you, you, if you're a member of F45, you'd know you're probably paying about $66 a week. This is in Australia. Um, it varies a little bit, but generally it's about $66 a week. I know it goes up to about $88 a week for uh, the gyms in and around the CBD. Really, um, how much are you willing to pay for the privilege of attending those classes? They're the ones who are going to be the most impacted too, because if you think about it, they've got a relatively small confined space and they try to cram a lot of people in. That's their model. Uh, low cost in terms of the premises, rent, um, but they try to cram a lot of people in. They're charging them $66 a week. If they can only put 10 in a class now or 20 in a class, what's that going to mean for membership prices? I really can't see how they're going to be able to sustain uh, the current model, I've looked at the, the F45 model before, um, considering buying one, um, even at $66, you know, if, if you're not in the right place and um, you, you, you don't have the right demographic, you're really not uh, making a huge amount of money out of one of those places. For the big gyms, um, look, um, the unofficial, uh, self-appointed industry body for gyms and fitness professionals in Australia called uh, Fitness Australia. They've come out um, with some statements around what they think should be happening. I'll read you a little bit about what they think is going to occur. The first thing they talk about is not uh, revolutionary, obviously, it's social distancing. Um, they know that people are gonna have to keep a distance. How you 
enforce that in a big box 24 hour gym i'm not really sure they're talking about disabling the water bubblers and the showers so if you need to fill up your water bottle um, if you've run out of water or if you plan on having a shower uh, if you do a, a session a workout before work and you need to have a shower get dressed go to work that's not really going to be an option at least in the short term people must bring their own towels so any gym that supplies towels probably aren't going to be able to do that they'll have increased signage i'm guessing to talk about things like social distancing and cleaning they'll have some increased or they'll have an increase in the number of sanitation stations now i'm not sure what that is really i know some gyms have some some sort of wipes and spray and stuff but it's not a big thing i think most gyms it won't be increasing it will actually be implementing some of those sanitation stations and if they have a pa, PA system they'll be doing reminders and on a regular basis um, over the pa to keep your distance and to clean your equipment that sort of thing the way we've been doing things in the past sweat all over the equipment don't use a towel don't wipe it down that's all got to change and it will change people i think have been pretty good lately with um, how they've been managing social distance how they've been respecting the space of other people and that's i don't see any reason why that won't continue in the gym it's just going to be a matter of time i think i think if there's uh as time goes on i think some of these practices will will become a little bit more relaxed uh, whether it be intentionally or not and I'd hate to think that gyms are going to be impacted um, down the line simply because we can't do the right thing now sorry I've got a home ice cream truck um, that's decided to park himself outside my house and play his music <laughs> no not here <laughs> The other thing, the other thing that a lot of gyms will be doing will be disabling, um, if, say, every second treadmill, every second bike, just to put a bit of space between people and enforce that sort of thing. Um, I, I reckon they'll probably end up removing some of that equipment and cutting back on the the amount of cardio equipment they have and just simply spacing them out a little bit more. It just makes sense. They're very expensive pieces of equipment anyway. Um, do they really need? To, they, that many probably not i know that um in peak times they get a bit busy but um you know for me that's a good thing i think to encourage more people to go and do some strength training um, and get off the treadmill get off the cross trainer is a good thing um, the last thing i would say is about personal trainers so personal trainers um, have been spoken about a little bit within uh the context of gyms in the past few weeks two months whatever it's been now that gyms have been closed um, but not all personal trainers are equal. Um, gyms have a lot of personal trainers working in those facilities, either directly for the company or as a contractor. Um, but then there are people like me who work for myself outside of a gym, I work in my home studio here. Um, how is that going to affect me? Not a huge amount, to be honest. Look, I've, I've had to um, um, implement some, some things to comply with all the rules lately. And uh, I've lost a lot of business as well. Um, many of my clients have chosen not to come and see me um, in spite of the fact that whilst the, the, the laws around uh, personal trainers working in a private facility are a little bit grey, they probably could have come. Um, I understand that uh, not everybody wants to um, expose themselves to possible health problems and that's fine. And then going forward, I think personal trainers who are working for themselves, boot camp, uh, guys doing boot camps, yoga studios, things like that that are relatively um, sort of low contact in terms of the number of people that they're dealing with at any one time are going to be in a prime position to take uh, a, a take on more work to be real leaders in the industry. Uh, if you come and see me, uh, I'm dealing with one or two people maximum at a time and training them. So they're, they're always, if there's two, it's always partners or brother and sister or something like that. So it's not like um, there's a huge risk of passing on any virus or any um, sickness to someone else, not in your immediate family. Anyway, you probably already, that's probably already happening. Um, to be honest, it's a good thing. Um, personal trainers provide a great service that is often undervalued and overlooked by a lot of people. I see so many people at the gym not getting the full benefit out of their experience, paying money for a gym that 
Um, it's not teaching them anything, it's not giving them any benefit other than a piece of plastic that they can scan at the door when they walk in and say, I'm a member of a gym. They jump on a treadmill for 20 minutes and go home and don't really get any results. So there's gonna be that transition, I think, where a lot of people are gonna be looking to personal trainers to lead the way um, in terms of how we come out of the, the, the isolation that we've been forced into recently and also lead the way in terms of how we, uh, how we help people get stronger, get fitter, move better, uh, have less pain, look better, feel better, uh, and just uh, have, a, have a, a more enjoyable life uh, because of all of those things. So in short, it's gonna be a bit painful for a little while. I don't think we're gonna be able to get back to normal um, anytime soon, it will come, but I don't think it's gonna be anytime soon. Over the next couple of weeks, we'll see a relaxing of the rules. But how we respond to this beyond the next couple of weeks is going to be key. Keep your social distancing, keep clean, abide by other rules, but by all means, also go and speak to your personal trainer. There's a lot of value there, guys. Um, don't discount the personal trainer in terms of their ability to help you towards your goal. That's really all I wanted to cover today. Um, just talking about you know the way things are. Um, I hope everyone's safe and have been managing to do some training at least. I've been putting a lot of body work workouts, uh, sorry, body weight workouts on my channel here. If there's something else you'd like to see on this channel in terms of a style of workout, if you want me to do some uh, kettlebell workouts or resistance bands. I've already done a couple of those, dumbbells, whatever it might be, high intensity. Let me know, leave a comment in the comment section. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. I uh, really appreciate everybody who subscribes to my channel. Turn notifications on so you see your, my next video when it comes out. And I hope to see you again soon. Thanks guys, have a great day.